This is the civilization for NLL. Welcome! This is the Noble Leaders League Review Preview Magazine Volume 10. I am Shot Like. First up are the headlines, followed by the review of round 9 of the NLL. Next is a look at the updated war table, leader ratings, Adel's calendar, top 6 cities, and total tables. An update on the first qualifying round of the Noble Leaders Cup precedes the preview of games in League Round 10. Pakal II's reputation for giving away Diplo wins to his opponent is growing. There is some ridicule involved and some laughs have been had at his expense. He is not alone in having this problem though. Let's take a look at some numbers. Pakal II has had 6 games ending with a diplomatic victory condition. One of them he won the other 5 he lost. 67% of his games ends with a Diplo VC, with 55% being Diplo losses. When he is not busy voting for his opponents, he is getting conquered by them. He has lost conquest to both Ashoka and Julius Caesar. As mentioned, he is not alone in having this issue. Catherine has lost Diplo 4 times and won it once. So has Gilgamesh. One Diplo win and four Diplo defeats. Other leaders are a bit more balanced in their win-loss ratio. Suleiman has both won and lost Diplo three times. Qin Shi Huang has won three and lost two Diplo VCs. One thing to mention is that these are all leaders playing in the first division. The diplomatic victory condition doesn't seem to be that popular in the lower divisions. This could be down to random chance in which case we'll see it even out a bit during the season. Or it could be that the leaders in the first division are better at building the apostolic palace and calling a vote when they have a chance to win it. Hannibal, Justinian I and Sara Jacob have all won Diplo three times without losing it even once. If you have five victory conditions in your arsenal, you are probably a better leader than if you have four victory conditions in your arsenal. I am not jumping to conclusions yet, but it will be interesting to follow the season to see if this is a first division problem only. It seems wrong to call it a Pakal problem, since both Catherine and Gilgamesh seems to have this issue too. Mao Zedong started the season in the second division by gaining one point in his first three games. A draw at Charlemagne, followed by losses hosting Auguste Sassar and Louis XIV. After this, he was 17th in the league, looking like a relegation candidate. Six games and six wins later, he is third in the table on 13 points, two below Sirovarma II and Bismarck. Six consecutive wins is a record he shares with Sari Jakob. Suryavarman II, Stalin, Ashoka and Julius Caesar all stopped at five. How far can he extend his run of victories? Round 9 Review First Division Huayna Kapak hosted Saladin and drew for the second time this season. One point kept him in 16th place. Saladin dropped one place to 14th. Chen Shi Hang won a turn to 37 Diplo win, hosting Catherine, to climb one place into 10th. Catherine dropped into the relegation zone again and is now 17th. Cyrus lost turn 390 Conquest to Huao II, dropping two places to 12th. Huao II climbed above Ashoka to 5th. Pericles won a turn 364 Domination, hosting Willem van Oranje. He is up to 13th, while Willem stays 7th in the table. Willem is 6 points behind Julius Caesar, but only 3 points above the relegation zone. Justinian I lost a turn 477 domination to Ansa Musa. The host failed to recognize the opportunity for an early war, when he had more cities than Mansa after a good early game. When the Byzantine leader left Mansa Musa alive, the latter thrived through mid and late game to a point where only the time deadline was a threat to him getting a win. Mansa punished Justinian I for his lack of aggression by winning domination himself. 
Justinian I is still fourth, Mansa Musa climbed out of the relegation zone and is now 15th in the league. Suleiman won a turn 316, Diplo hosting Ashoka. Suleiman is 11th, while Ashoka's third consecutive defeat sees him on a season low 6th place. The former Tuttle is in poor form, having not won a single game of his last four. Gilgamesh hosted Sara Jakob and gave away a Diplo win to the Ethiopian leader on turn 255. He stays 8 in the table, Sara Jakob won his 6th consecutive game and is 2nd, one point behind the leader Julius Sazar. Peter got a draw when hosting Hannibal. Peter stayed 9th while Hannibal dropped to 3rd as Sara Jakob won to overtake him. Pakal II had Julius Sazar visiting. He didn't give away Diplo this time, but he lost nevertheless. The total took home a turn 331 conquest win from the Mayans. Pakal II is now 4 points off safety with his 3 points at the bottom of the table. It is time for him to start winning a few games now. These next few league games will be crucial for him to keep the hope of survival. After round 9 we have Julius Sazar top with 15 points, followed by Sari Jakob 14 and Hannibal 13. These are the only three with a theoretical chance of being total after next round. Justinian I 12 points, while the second and Ashoka both with 11 are forming a top 6 that seems to get a little bit ahead of the rest. Wane Kapak, Catherine and Pakal II are currently in relegation. Second division. Louis XIV won a turn 423 domination hosting Gandhi. He climbed 3 places to 11th, while Gandhi stays in the bottom 3 on 17th place with 5 points. Wang Kon lost domination turn 421 hosting Hammurabi and thus failed to improve his position at the bottom of the table. Hammurabi himself is fighting against relegation, so this win was important for him. He stays 15th for the time being. Churchill gave away a turn 344, Diplo to Charlemagne, dropping one place to 12th. Charlemagne climbed above Gandhi to 16th, but is still in the relegation zone. One point from safety. Ramses II took on Hatshepsut in the Egyptian derby. He lost a turn 412, culture game. Despite the loss, he climbed one place in the table to 9th. Hatshepsut stayed 13th, now with 8 points. Augustus Caesar welcomed Isabella to Rome, and the Spanish Empress grabbed both points as she went home with a turn 407 culture victory. None of them changed places in the table, they are still 8th and 5th respectively. Roosevelt won a turn 461, domination hosting Boudicca. He is 4th, while Boudicca dropped behind Ramses II and is now 10th in the table. Bismarck got a turn 393 domination win hosting Victoria, still second equal on points with Zerovarman II, Victoria is 7th. Mao Zedong won a turn 226 Diplo victory hosting Kublai Khan, his 6th win in row keeps him in 3rd place, 2 points behind the top 2, Kublai dropped into 14th place. Washington had hopes of closing in on the total but his first loss of points at home was a fact as Sir Varman II won domination on turn 415. The host is still in the playoffs with his 6th place, one point clear of Victoria and Augustus Sazar, who both also lost this round. Sir Varman II needed the win to stay top. He is still equal on points with Bismarck, but with a better score turn difference. Sir Varman II and Bismarck are in promotion with 15 points each. Mao Zedong 13, Roosevelt, Isabella both 12 and Washington 10 are in the playoffs. Charlemagne, Gandhi and Wang Kon are in relegation. Third division. Brennus hosted Sitting Bull and got a turn 401 domination win, climbing two places into 10th. Sitting Bull dropped back into 15th. Tokugawa lost domination at turn 366 hosting Elizabeth. He is rock bottom while Elizabeth climbed into 8th place. Alexander drew hosting Lincoln. The visitor didn't have enough to grab domination in a game where he should have won. Thus, Alexander got the point he needed to get ahead of Sitting Bull. Lincoln is 9th. Montezuma hosted Darius I and lost domination on turn 486. 
This was the third consecutive defeat and leaves him not only at the season low, but also outside the playoffs. Montezuma is now 7th in the table, Darius I is 14th. Genghis Khan hosted Shaka and was shaken as he lost conquest on turn 388. Shaka excelled in this game and showed us why he is considered an early to mid game threat. Genghis dropped into 4th place while Shaka climbed into 3rd. Ragnar hosted Napoleon in a game that was full of fighting, but with no winner in the end. A draw meant Ragnar dropped into 12th place while Napoleon climbed into 6th ahead of Montezuma. Mehmed II won culture at turn 442, hosting De Gaulle. He went up above Stalin to become the new total. De Gaulle dropped into 5th place. Frederick drew Stalin, allowing Mehmed II to grab the top spot and Stalin to be second. The host himself dropped two places to 11th in the table. There are seven leaders within two points of the total after round 9. Mehmed II and Stalin are on 13 points, Shaka and Genghis Khan on 12, De Gaulle, Napoleon and Montezuma on 11. Theoretically, all seven can become the total after round 10. 10. However, with Napoleon hosting Genghis Khan as the only top 7 clash while Montezuma visiting Elizabeth is the only other leader not playing a lower half leader, I expect either Mehmed II or Stalin to be total. Which one depends on the score turn differences in their respective games. Tokugawa is 4 points off 15th place now. He is not so much competing against the other leaders as for himself to regain a small amount of dignity. One thing is to end up rock bottom of the league, another altogether is to not even put up a good fight trying to avoid it. The war table is led by Suryavarman II and Stalin both on 0.722. Shaka is 3rd and De Gaulle 4th, both with 0.714 ratios. 17 leaders have a ratio of 0.5 or better. With Hammurabi finally winning a war, now there are only 2 left without a victory. Cyrus and Suleiman. And I have to mention Tokugawa here. Despite being dead last in the league, he is in 39th place in the war table, having won 4 out of his 18 wars for a ratio of 0.222. You can see the top 3 of a select number of stats updated after round 9 on the screen right now. Alexander still has been involved in most wars, now 36. Shaka and Montezuma share most victories, 15 each. Darius I is alone in having lost 15 wars. Suryavarman II has captured 85 cities. And Wang Kong has lost 67. Shaka has spent 51.6% of its turns in war. That is a total of 1934 turns, which is also the highest of any leader. Sara Jakob is now top of the leader ratings with 1609 points, Julius Sassar is second with 1607, Bismarck third with 1601. 11 leaders are above 1550, 22 above 1500. Towards the bottom, Three leaders are below 1400 points, Tokugawa 1396, Pakal II 1385 and Wang Kong 1376. In the Adels calendar, Sarawama II is still top with 1834 points, followed by Sarajakob on 1899. New in third place is Mao Zedong on 1913, pushing Hannibal down to fourth. Louis XV is now 5th with 1937 after his domination win, which leaves Willem van Oranje in 6th with his 1955 points. These are the 6 leaders on fewer than 2000 points. Sorry, Jakob, Hannibal and Louis XIV are missing only one victory condition to make it to a full 5. Sarah and Louis is missing space while Hannibal misses conquest. 11 leaders are still stuck in the 2300s, while Tokugawa is alone on 2500 points as he is still winless this season. The average score is 2176 points. If there was one leader that had gotten all the best scores in each victory condition, he or she would have had 1564 points. How low total score is it possible to get this season? Your guess is as good as mine. Julius Caesar leads the 1st Division TSC leaderboard with 180 points. 
Ashoka 155 and Hwane Kapak 153, second and third. The bottom three are Suleiman 86, Pakal the second 80 and Cyrus 73. Sir Varman the second 172 points, Roosevelt 170 and Bismarck 155 is top three in the second division. Here we find Hammurabi 71, Washington 67 and Wang Kong 58 as the bottom three. In the third division, both Mehmed the second and Stalin have 173 points, with Mehmed the second ahead due to more number one cities. Seven versus six. Shaka is third with 166 points. There is no point in talking about a bottom three here, as Tokugawa is so far behind the rest. He is on 29 points. Above him, a Lincoln on 69 and Alexander on 80. Julius Sassar grabs his third total and is now only two behind Ashoka. Saladin still has only one, but is also one point above the relegation zone at the moment. More likely to play Division 2 next season than to grab another total, it seems. Suyarama II is the longest reigning total as he prolongs his time at the top to seven consecutive rounds. Roosevelt has had two totals in second place. In the league, the American leader is in fourth place, three points behind Surya Varman. He can still grab more totals this season if he can get a few good wins in a row. Third division is where the action happens when it comes to totals. Mehmed II is the new after round 9. Stalin stayed top for only one round, Montezuma has 5, De Gaulle 2 and Mehmed Stalin won each. In theory, all four current and former totals can be total after next round, in addition to Shaka, Genghis Khan and Napoleon. Round 10 is going to be a blast in Division 3. These are the results from the first 28 games in the first qualifying round of the Nobel Leaders' Cup. As you can see, only two of them, Julius Civilis and Kuchisa, required overtime to get through. The other 26 leaders winning did so inside of the 500 turns of regular time. The next 28 games will be played prior to and alongside round 10 of the NLL. You can pause the video and read through this fixture list to see if any of your favorite leaders are up in the next 4 weeks. More will come later and this list of leaders through to the second qualifying round will grow as the days go by. Round 10 Preview First Division Mansa Musa got himself out of the bottom 3 with back to back wins. Now we will have to continue his good form to stay above it. He is hosting Cyrus this time. Mansa is 15th with 7 points and in 302 form. Cyrus is 12th with 8 points and in 104 form. Both leaders could need a win here, but I'm not the one to predict which one of them will get it. Pakal II is hosting Pericles in round 10. The host is bottom of the table with 3 points and in a 0-0-5 form after 5 consecutive defeats. Pericles is 13th with 7 points and in 2-1-2 form after being undefeated in his last 3 games. The visitor must be favorite here, but this is the kind of game Pakal II must begin to get something from if he wants to survive. Huayna Kapak welcomes Suleiman. Huayna is 16th with 6 points and in 2-2-1 form. Suleiman is 11th with 8 points and in 3-0-2 form. Both leaders are in decent to good form and are looking to climb the table. Huayna Kapak with the added incentive to get out of the relegation zone. It is a hard to predict game. I guess I'd call it a 50-50 as to who will win it. Saladin will host Chin Chi Wang. Saladin is 14th with 7 points. Chin is 10th with 8. Saladin's form is 1-1-3 with no wins last 3 games. Chin is in 3-0-2 form after back-to-back -back wins. If Saladin loses this one, he risks being the first former total to drop into the relegation zone. Hannibal is happy to entertain an out-of-form Catherine for his round 10 game. He is third in the league with 13 points and in 2-1-2 form. Catherine is 17th with 5 points and in 0-1-4 form. No wins in the last 6 games. Is it finally time for Hannibal to get his missing conquest victory condition and go top of the Adelskalender? 
while the second takes on Willem van Oranje in Portugal. Wow is 5th on 11 points, Willem is 7th on 9, while the second is in 2 on 2 form with back to back wins at Ashoka and Cyrus. Willem is in 3 on 2 form, but with back to back defeats round 8 and 9. These are both two good leaders that are only lacking a little bit of consistency to be up there fighting for the title. Hard to predict this one. Ashoka hosts Gilgamesh. The former total is 6th with 11 points after 3 consecutive defeats and is in 1-1-3 form. Gilgamesh is 8th with 9 points and in 4-0-1 form, losing round 9 after 4 wins in a row before that. Looks like Gilgamesh is the favorite, but Ashoka, surely he will stop his losing streak soon? Sarah Jakob vs Justina the first is the top game this round in Division 1. Sara is 2nd in the league on 14 points, Justinian is 4th with 12. Sara Jakob is in 5-0-0 form and has won 6 consecutive games. Justinian I is in 3-0-2 form after a loss round 9. This also happens to be the game between the two leaders ranked number 1 and number 2 before the season started. They were expected to be fighting for the title. They are both top 4 fighting for the title. This is the game you don't want to miss. Total Julius Caesar is hosting Peter. Julius has 15 points and is in 3-1-1 form. Peter is 9th in the table with 9 points and in 2-1-2 form. Julius is a natural favorite, but I think Peter can make a nuisance if he has a good day. Enough to get a point or two? That I don't know. Second Division Hammurabi takes on a visit from Louis XIV in the first game in Division 2. Hammurabi is 15th with 7 points, Louis 11th with 8. The host won last game and is in 2-0-3 form. The visitor is in 3-0-2 form and has back-to-back -back wins. Both leaders are still trying to get some distance between themselves and the bottom. 3. Kublai Khan hosts Hatshepsut. Kublai is 14th with 7 points. Hatshepsut is 13th with 8. Kublai is in 2-1-2 form with a loss in round 9. Hatshepsut won round 9 and is in 2-0-3 form. I have a hard time calling this one. Isabella is hosting Washington. Both are in the playoffs. Isabella 5th with 12 points, Washington 6th with 10. Isabella is in 4-0-1 form while Washington is in 2-1-2 and without a win in his last two games. Washington has not yet won a game away from home. Looks like an Isabella victory to me. Wang Kong receives Churchill to Korea for his 10th game. Bottom of the table with 2 points and in 0-0-5-4 with 6 consecutive defeats are Wang Kong's stats in coming into this game. Churchill is 12th with 8 points and in 2-0-3 form. Add to the mix that Churchill is not very good away from home, he has a 1-0-3 stat on the road. That is the same as Wang Kong has at home. This could be a more open game than what the Churchill fans are hoping for. Augustus Sasser is hosting Ramses II. Augustus is 8 in the table with 9 points, Ramses is 9th with 8 points. Augustus is in 2-1-2 form but with back-to-back -back defeats. Ramses II is in 2-0-3 form, he has won and lost every other game the last 6 games. Since he lost last game, is it due a win again? Victoria takes on Roosevelt in England. She is 7th in the table with 9 points. Roosevelt is 4th with 12. She is in 1-1-3 form while he is in 4-0-1 form, currently on a 4 game winning streak. Roosevelt is favorite on form, but Victoria has the added incentive that she might get into the playoffs with a win here. Charlemagne is hosting Bismarck. The host is 16th with 6 points in the table, while Bismarck is 2nd with 15. Charlemagne's form is 2-0-3 after a win last game. Bismarck has 3-1-1 form and is undefeated in his last 4 games. One would think Bismarck heavy favorite here. Bodica welcomes Mao Zedong this game. She is 10th in the table with 8 points and in 1-0-4 form after back-to-back -back defeats. Mao is 3rd with 13 points and in 5-0-0 form, currently on a 6 game winning streak. While I do hold Mao as a clear favorite, I cannot shake the feeling that Bodhika could be up to something in this game. I guess time will tell. Suryavarma II is hosting Gandhi. 
The total has 15 points and is in 3-1-1 form after back-to-back -back wins. Gandhi is 17th with 5 points and in 2-0-3 form, currently suffering a 3-game losing streak. It will be a big upset should the host fail to win this one. Third Division Opening round 10 in Division 3 is Elizabeth hosting Montezuma. She is 8th in the table with 9 points. Montezuma is 7th with 11. Her form is 2-0-3 after winning round 9 to stop her 3-game losing streak. Montezuma is in 2-0-3 form also and are on a 3-game losing streak himself. Can the former total stop his streak at 3, just as Elizabeth did last round? Darius I welcomes Frederick to Persia. He is 14th with 5 points. The visitor is 11th with 9. Darius is in 1-1-3 form undefeated in his last 2 games. Frederick is in 2-1-2 undefeated in his last 3. Lincoln will host Brennus. Both leaders are on 9 points, Lincoln in 9th place, Brennus in 10th. Lincoln is in 2-1-2 form after a draw away to Alexander in round 9. Brennus is undefeated in 2 games, also in 2-1-2 form. The goal is hosting Ragnar. The goal is 5th in the table with 11 points. Ragnar is number 12 with 8. The goal is in 2-1-2 form after losing round 9. Ragnar is in 0-2-3. He was undefeated in his first 4 games of the season. Now he is without a win in his last 5 and is at an all-time low in the league. Napoleon takes on Genghis Khan in France. He is 6th in the table with 11 points. Genghis is 4th with 12. Napoleon's form is 2-1 after two consecutive draws. Genghis Khan has a 3-0-2 form after losing at home to Shaka last game. Shaka hosts Tokugawa. Shaka is 3rd with 12 points, Tokugawa 16th with 1. Shaka is in 3-2-0 form, Tokugawa 0-1-4. This should be an easy win for Shaka. Will it be? Sitting Bull receives the current total Mehmed II this round. 15th in the table with 5 points and in 2-0-3 form is not too scary for the 5-0-0 form visitor. With 13 points, Mehmed II is level with Stalin in the table, ahead only on score turn difference. He needs a good performance here and a win to stay top. Stalin is hosting Alexander, second in the table with 13 points and 4-1-0 form, with a draw last game stopping his 5 game winning streak. Alexander is 13th with 6 points and in 1-1-3 form, he also drew last round to stop a streak. In Alexander's case it was a 3 game losing streak though. Stalin is a big favorite. This has been the 10th edition of the NLL RPM. The round 10 fixtures start Monday, October 18th. Before that, the first qualifying round of the NLC, Nobel Leaders Cup, starts with games from Monday, October 4th. I am Jot Like, this has been the NLL RPM. See you later. Goodbye for now.